everybody to NADA 2023 Special Edition. We're super happy we have Jim Flint, the founder of Local Search Group with us for this segment. Jim, tell us a little bit about NADA, what you're here for, what you're looking for. Well, I'm here kind of looking at what's coming back into play and a lot of things maybe two years prior from the pandemic experience are now things that dealers are getting back on the bike and riding again. In a big way too. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And so some of the some of the habits, good or bad, that might have developed in the post pandemic experience are now like, okay, I know now with interest rates going higher that I've got to take care of certain details in my business in a different way than I did when things were a little bit different. I see. Yeah. Now, for most of you, I got to tell you, you know, we're just pulling people, some people we know, etc. I've known Jim for a long time, ten years, eleven years. It might maybe. be more than that. Might more than that. I, yeah. Anyway, he's a, a local guru. Uh, he di didn't want I me to say that. that. He, he <laughs> disavows that. But he's uh, very good at search engine marketing and a lot of other things. Uh, but he uh, also became a friend, and we know a lot of the same people. And he's really good at what he does. What do you see different this year versus other years uh, coming out of the, you know post pandemic, etc.? Uh, do you see uh, focal points uh, in areas that you weren't seeing? You say, you know, there's things are coming back. Is there any one thing that you notice or? Well, yeah. And, and part of the reason I say. You're supposed that to say I, fixed ops marketing. <laughs> fixed, I mean, so there are two things that are happening. One of them, and, and the reason I don't want to be the expert is because I'm humble and hungry, right? And you and I have been through we different that, cycles right? and I know you two have as well, Charity. And so as I, as I look, there are two things that are happening. One, net to sales is invariably going to go down this year. So as dealers look at how can I better support my business right. operations, their absorption rate, basically fixed ops, is gonna have to pick up some of the slack. Yep. And most of, if not all the stores I work with, have your platform on them because I need to go to a trusted place that can update the information on a monthly basis, that has valuable coupons, that thinks about the importance of being operationally transparent, like in terms of a sure. dare to compare analysis. And so, for certain on the fixed ops, they're gonna have to pick up some of the slack that's gonna go away. Absolutely. And then I will tell you that I went to a session separately on paid search and it was packed. Oh. I, could, I couldn't believe how many people were in there. And it looked like to me, you know, noticing the demographics of the room, a lot of marketing directors and a lot really? of general managers. And the presentation was excellent in terms of the strategy and the structure that was appropriate, but it was nothing new. It was not right. a breakout magical unicorn. Right. It was like the same stuff we were talking about in 2012. Right. But they're focused in a way they've never been focused before on that. Is that one of the things I hear you saying? Yes. Yeah. They're, they're, they're looking more at ratios. They're looking more at return on investment. Yeah. And so some of the direct investing mindset that was around kind of in that run from 2010 to 2020, yeah, right, where we had a new car inventory level of about 17 million. The, the most, uh, the best decade ever. Yeah. yeah, and it was consistent, it was competitive. It was. And it was predictable. Yeah. Very. And so now it, it feels like to me we're going back a little bit to that era, and the question to me becomes, are new car inventory levels gonna go to 14 million, 15 million, you know, 16 million? Because the terms on the deals that are getting written are typically greater than 60 months. So where does a consumer come into all this mix? Well, yeah. that brings up another good point. Because of the, uh, the last two years, dealers gotten really fat, okay? And a lot of people that bought these vehicles were special, I mean, you couldn't get them, right? Yeah. So that people would fly in or drive in from all over the place, which means they're pumping them out of, and they're not in their PMA, where are those where are they going to get service at other not their dealer right. most of them so it, great focal points I mean that, that dealers are thinking about do you agree oh no totally like yeah. I'm working with dealers right now who are wanting to ensure that they're sales efficient because those customers will come back and it's taping the zip codes to your sales desk and saying hey make sure that if they're in these zip codes that I'm not letting this person not that you wouldn't put a deal together sure but in particular put the deal together because they're going to come back yeah. And, and there's kind of that double-edged sword that we have to be thinking about consistently on the sales side, Absolutely. especially on new, also on used, and what is it gonna do for the entire dealership operations? You know, early, a minute ago when we were talking to Jim and I was lifting him up, you know, about being a guru, et cetera. <laughs> and, you know, he, so it's, it, it, this is one of the things I loved about him over the years and dealing with him. So people sometimes will say, oh, I, uh, 
you're you're a ten on a scale of one a one to ten as far as salesmanship or whatever the case may be. But if somebody's a ten, something's missing because they know it all. Okay, so he remains humble and kind. He's probably a two out of a ten, but he's really close to a ten. But he acts like he's a two. He acts like he's a two because you know what? He's teachable. He's always improving. He's always learning. He's always growing. Definitely, That's definitely what I love about always Jim's learning. Life. Yeah, I appreciate that about yeah each of you. And yeah. you're right. This space. It's so big, it's so fast, it's so competitive. And a lot of times I feel like it's like the NFL, right? Where you're, <laughs> you're watching the film and you're studying the game tape and you're trying to figure out how can I can just get that little edge. And I, I think as I watch the AFC and NFC championships and even the Super Bowl, I'm starting to think about what is it that separates the one team that wins it all from the ones that don't? And I, I had heard Tony Dungy talk about it the year that the Colts won the championship and it was simply this. He said it was that, it wasn't one big play, it wasn't a miracle. Right, it wasn't a hail mary that made the difference. It was that you know on third and two, our running back got the first down by half a yard. Right, it was on fourth and one we did the quarterback sneak that advanced the ball, and so it was the accumulation of a bunch of small plays that resulted in the prize, not a big swing and miss. Exactly. Right? Mighty Casey struck out. Exactly. To use that sports analogy. What a humble and kind coach he was. Yeah. And it is. It's about one inch at a time. It's all the small plays, focusing on the small things. The big things we focus on because they come at us, we have to pay attention to them. But it's in the smaller stuff that we really get movement. So, well said. so that's it. I'm not a guru. I'm the Tony Dungy of yes, automotive digital marketing. I'll take that <laughs> one. Okay, okay. There you go. Fair deal. Okay. We'll put that in the, okay. the captions. There we go. So are you you're here for the, you know, obviously uh, close to your backyard. You're still in Houston unless I you am. moved up here. No, okay. I'm in Houston. Uh, are you here for the whole time, uh, the whole thing? No, I am excited about Deion Sanders speaking tomorrow. That's going to oh, be exciting. Yeah. If you haven't heard him speak before, he's got a wonderful like social media following and watching him as a cultural change agent do the things he's doing with Colorado is amazing. With that coach at the high school and uh, all the stuff that he's doing, right? And that well, he went to Jackson State. Yeah, okay. And now he's it. going to the Colorado Buffaloes and he's speaking on Sunday morning. And so I wish I were going to be able to hear him speak, but I'll probably be tuning in remotely just because he's such yeah. a compelling guy, and when yeah. he's going to be talking to automotive dealers, I can't wait yeah. to hear yeah. what he's going to say. Oh, he's going to have some great nuggets and tidbits, I'm sure. Yes. So any, was there any one particular thing, or are you just kind of just checking in, seeing what everybody's doing, hanging out with old friends and stuff? You know? I, I am doing that. I was intrigued. I was telling Charity earlier, there is one of the booths over here nearby that's talking about having dealers transact with cryptocurrency yeah. okay. or Bitcoin. And so I think that's kind of in the formative stages. And as I was mentioning to you, it reminds me of what it was like early on when we said, oh, hey, this internet thing. Yeah. Yep. It's yeah. going to happen. And people yeah. are like, oh, no, the internet. No, yeah. it's a fad. It's this, that, or the other. And then it starts to gain adoption. And it's yeah. not there yet. But, no. but the second phase to me was mobile was like, oh, mobile's going to be a big thing. Remember? And people are like, nah, nah, the internet, maybe it'll <laughs> stick, but this mobile thing's not oh, as yeah. big a deal. Yeah. And it happens. Yeah, so. nobody's coming to the dealership to buy cars anymore or anything like that. No, you it's know, all going to be, right. yeah, no, that, yeah. yeah. So yeah. There, there's like more room, I think, at the table as things evolve. What do you think about it? New technology adoption always takes a little time to get used to. Yeah. And we're working it out, you know, um, I think it will be a transaction method, but we, the kinks are not ironed out yet with uh, any sort of crypto payment system. Yeah, I think um, an opportunity is not an opportunity when everybody thinks it is. They've already really missed the opportunity. And I think it's really, really important to embrace technology. And one of the things that I believe in, and, and I change my mind a lot. Sometimes people from years ago say, well, you didn't used to think that way. Well, uh, first of all, it's okay to change your mind. Okay. And I have much more information now. And so I don't think that way anymore. And I think technology is wonderful. Uh, and it can be overwhelming too. Technology is, is wonderful to accelerate momentum, right. not necessarily to create momentum. People get uh, it cost him more money and time and a lot of sometimes I've, I've seen a lot of that any, you have any thoughts about that or no you actually and this is why I enjoy speaking with you you, you help me advance my thoughts faster than I would if if I was talking I don't to believe other that people. but thank no, you very much because no. <laughs> no. listen to this like, the, the thing about opportunity especially in the automotive industry is the idea that you got to have the ops yep. right because with an opportunity I could bring more people in but if I don't execute I've actually upset the apple cart more than I've helped advance the ball and so True. remember the ops in opportunity yep. Yep. and really That's even right. the name of your, right? It's all about the ops. Fix the ops. WTF. Yeah. <laughs> what, <is laughs> what the fix ops? What the fix ops? Yep. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it, 
Uh, what the fixed opportunity? Yeah. What the fixed opportunity? We, uh, charity. That's charity's brainchild. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, this has been hugely successful to us because we're on everything. The WTF really catches people, but yeah. then we get a lot of really interesting people, such as you. Uh, on and we distribute it, you know, multiple, I mean, everywhere. And yeah. I should congratulate each of you for being selected to speak at NADA. Thank I mean, that's much. like oh, a lifetime you. achievement award. Yeah. I don't know how many thank times you, you are going to speak, but that's incredible. And if people haven't downloaded the the app or signed up to get the information. Thank you, Jim. It's ex yeah. I mean, that that's so exciting for me. you guys. Yeah. 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 Um, I got to share this one thing because uh, Cherry and I have done a few, you know, each, each time we evolve and we get better yeah. and figure it out. We're a great team. So we were at one yesterday. Every seat was full. Matter of fact, we've done two. Every yes. seat okay. was full. Yes. So we're, we didn't know this. And the this. overflow room. Yeah, we didn't know there was a thing called an overflow room. Well, the overflow room was overflowed. Yeah. And they were watching from a, uh, a TV or a yeah. projector. Closed circuit something. monitor. Yeah, right? there you yeah. go. Yeah. 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 They had to turn people away, which is, yeah. I, I mean, sad but great. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> sad but true. Yeah. We, we were honored. And this yeah. isn't going to appear until after anyway. But it's almost like they're, they're, they're looking to us like we're some tremendous thought leaders and gurus like you know I, I called Jim Definitely earlier Jim. but you know hey we're just figuring it out too there's a lot to EV it's in its infancy stages just like crypto for sure and, and, and you know what I don't know if you know Glenn Lundy you know Glenn Lundy I do not. okay well hello Glenn if you're out Hi, there Glenn. I look forward to meeting you yeah, yeah. Uh, you will soon okay. so last year when I, I met him officially long story but I'm gonna keep it real short he was talking about how technology has moved Jim from 1922 to 2022 oh, over man. the last hundred years yeah. and he said Mark my words, the next five years, technology is going to move as faster, faster than the last hundred. I believe it. I do too. Yeah. Especially with AI. Yep. I can believe that. Yep. Yeah. Right. We were just talking about uh, AI and chat GDP. Is GBT. It GBT. Yeah. Created by a company called OpenAI. Big and thing, yeah. Whoa. Owned by Elon Musk, right? I don't know about that. I think, I know this, Microsoft bought them uh, a third of the company. Yeah. It was right. valued at $29 billion, And so Microsoft paid $10 billion. And let me let me assure you, they're going to bring that to market in a way that yep. competes with Google. That which is great because they're making moves because they were really I slowing honestly, down for a while. They were. They yeah, were. I honestly didn't even hear that until uh, uh, I'm on this uh, clubhouse thing in the okay. morning. Yeah. And Brian Kramer uh, mentioned the GB what Chat GBT. Yeah. 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 That that. That. Chat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm hearing it more and more and more. It's like you see a, a, a color of car, a car you're interested in. Next, next, next thing you know, you see it everywhere on the road, right? You know it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know it. Yeah. Well, thanks uh, for joining us, Jim. Yeah. And uh, if are you interested in people getting a hold of you? And if you are, yeah. where do they do? Sure, you can email me, Jim at localsearchgroup.com, or oftentimes the the fastest way is to text me at seven one three four one zero one four six six. He's a great guy to know. Yeah. Twenty twenty three N A D A. Jim Flint, local search group right here, good friend, extraordinaire, really does know what he's talking about and will customize something specifically for you. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Yeah.